on out. Come over here. Come to me. Come to me. You're okay. Come here. Come on out. Come on out. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Hi, I'm Joel Persinger. I'm the Gun Guy. Thank you very much for all of your support of Gun Guy TV. I am super duper grateful. Before we get started with the third and final segment of the interview I did with Sam Paredes and Rick Travis, I ask you to please check us out on these alternative locations. There's a bunch of them. Most notable are Rumble and, oddly enough, Twitter, which is starting to allow us to upload videos directly to Twitter, even the long ones. So, Please follow me over there. We'll support Elon Musk if we can. I'm also trying to get this channel on YouTube to be at about 250,000 subscribers, not too far away. So you can help me get there by subscribing and sharing the video on Rumble. I'd like to reach the 10,000 subscriber mark. Once again, not too far away, but I do need your help. So like and subscribe and, uh, and please share the video. All right. In this interview, we've talked about a whole bunch of stuff going on in California. The one thing I really haven't addressed with them is the feeling that we never, ever win. Have you ever noticed that? It seems like we just fight and fight and fight and fight and fight, but we're not. I, I know we're making headway, but it kind of feels like we're not. I wanted to find out what Rick and Sam's answer to that question would be. So I ask it. What would you say to gun owners to help them stay in the fight, want to stay in the fight when it seems like the fight never ends and never Never, ever do we actually have a final victory where we can have our rights back. So let's go back to April 1775. Despite what a lot of us were taught in school, there were some words that were never uttered. Paul Revere never said, the British are coming because everyone was British. <laughs> Quit writing out a stupid lie. What he said was the Redcoats are coming. And the Redcoats... It came for lots of things. They had been housed in people's homes. There had been numerous taxes. There had been massacres. There had been tea thrown in harbors. There had been all fields burned. We never went to war. We never raised up arms. We didn't do anything. We took it. And then the breaking point was when General Gage said, let's go into Lexington Concord and take their guns and their powder and all their tools away. And we said, to the greatest superpower on the planet, no. And people as young as high schoolers to as old as in their 70s took up arms and fought their government. That was the day those British people became known as the word Americans. Gun control is a 248 year passed down generation to generation legacy of standing up to the government and saying no. So for anyone in this space today, it's like, well, this is all brand new. The sky is falling. We never had this before. That's an absolute lie. Every generation has had to fight gun control. In this state, CRP has been around for almost 150 years. When we first came to existence, Sam and I couldn't hunt because hunting was only for people that were doing it for um, like big corporations. Hunting for people like you and I, Joel, couldn't do it. And it was democratically controlled. And the state went the opposite direction. So it's went back and forth. Generally speaking, when you look at politics, and I love studying politics and history, as you know, Joel, what I'm seeing right now, and Sam knows because I've kind of been giddy about it, and I understand that some of the things in this that I'm going to say are not going to be good for a lot of people. They're very tragic. But we had a big winter storm. That winter storm laid a lot of snow. That snow is going to melt in a fierce way and it's going to cause flooding and damage. A lot of people are going to lose a lot and suffer a lot. And that I, I, I truly regret and I'm praying for those families. But you couple that with what's going to come after mudslides, fires, like California is in for it. That is going to push people to the brink. That with the increasing crime, all the things, California, then the 24s and 26s is going to come to the ultimate test. And every other time this state or any other state in the unions come to this test, there's been a political landscape change. Things that we've used for years, like this is a, a Democratic plus 12 or plus 20 district, that doesn't mean anything as much as it used to, because when people are mad, they don't vote with their party. 
So um, we are prepared to participate in the legislative arena, to, to, to use every tool that is at our disposal to tell the truth, and then we are prepared to go into the judicial system in order to combat all of the uh, stupid, ugly, unconstitutional garbage that they, they pass, and that's the way the system works. And we've learned that, and we're doing it now better than ever, ever in our history, number one. Number two, the legislature started with a whole bunch of bills. Oh, you, you mentioned there were just dozens and dozens and dozens of bills, and a lot of them have gone away. Why have they gone away? Because when they have legislative deadlines, they, they put in what is called a spot bill. It's a placeholder. They have an intention of writing a gun control law. They don't know what it is yet, but they put in a placeholder. And we we follow those, those placeholders. And oftentimes, because of what has been happening in the legislative process, uh, with, with some of the bills and the testimony that that the three of us have given, the staff goes to the to the members and says, "You know, that bill you were considering is is contrary to the law or contrary to the Constitution. Maybe you ought to." So what they do is they they take that spot bill and they turn it into an insurance bill or a taxation bill or something completely unrelated to guns because they have been informed that their their policy. Uh, uh, goals are 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 just so far off, and and uh, and we're we're grateful for that, and that's why we are uh, developing an even better uh, relationship with the staff members of of the of the committee. So that's how a lot of the the bills go off the table. It isn't that we went and 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 uh, posed opposition to them; it's that we successfully argued our case in the bills that have come before committee and staff goes to those members and says, you yeah, know, this is probably not a really good idea. Why don't you consider any other policy goal that you have? So that's how a lot of the bills just, just disappear or they change into, they keep the same number, but they t- turn into something that has nothing to do with guns and firearm and freedom and things like that. Third, uh, judge Benitez, um, you know what? One thing I've learned about following this this judge, I too every every day, Chuck, has he released anything? Or I go to the court's you know website, has an opinion been released? But what I've learned is that Judge Benitez is completely thorough. He is an outstanding jurist. He's making sure that he cannot be criticized for 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 not crossing every T and dotting every I procedurally when he issues his uh, opinions. So uh, I will be patient. Uh, I have a very strong suspicion that his opinions are going to be very good because based on his previous opinions, and I'm, I'm okay to wait until he, he uh, uh, releases his opinions and then takes on the next set of, of lawsuits that, that are going to restore the second amendment. All right, Sam, lay, lay it out for us. What are you guys, what are we facing right now? We've talked about a bunch of other stuff. What are we facing right now in the Capitol? Well, we're facing a, a, a tax bill uh, where they want to charge a tax, an excise tax on all guns and ammunition purchases. Um, clearly unconstitutional, but they don't care. Uh, we've got, let's see. Oh, boy. Try to pick the the, the highlights here. Also known as the low lights, but it's just me. <laughs> well, we have hey, we have the camp bill. <clears throat> yes, Rick. Why don't you continue with the list while I look it up? Yeah. So the uh, camp bill is Assembly Bill two sixty two, and this further goes after the youth. What it is now is he's formed a group of people that would consult and decide how much and if a range can be on a camp. And if this bill was passed and signed in the law, Boy Scout camps, JROTC camps, religious-based camps, 4-H camps, FFA camps, college camps, high school shooting sports camps would fairly cease to exist because they can set the pricing and, and the methods by which those ranges can or cannot be used. And as a result, you would wipe out youth ranges in California. The impact, here's those three easy ones. About a half a million kids get their first or second opportunity to understand firearms and firearm safety. And if you look at the kids that went through that program, much, much, much reduced rate of issues around firearms being mishandled. Second thing, 
is that when you look at it, California produces the vast majority of people that shoot on the competitive world stage, represents in the Olympics. Uh, we provide some of the best shooters across the country in the shooting sports. And that's one of the reasons so much money is targeting our kids is because the anti-gun community, the people that want to take away our rights, that's exactly why they're targeting this state because we do have some of the most outstanding shooting programs to bring those kids up into that competitive world. And so this is a targeted part of the package that um, Governor Newsom said when he wanted to kill the, the next generation from being gun owners. This is a big part of it. And this comes right on the heels of 2571 that we fought last year. And there's a lot of people that aren't watching it. And to me, it's a, a very serious bill. And I get why a lot of us watch the, the tax bill you know, um, that Sam's talking about, that's, I call it the zombie bill because they've tried that, I think, five or six times now. You know, why we're watching SB2, obviously, safe spaces, why we're watching a bill that would turn in the entire area of Sacramento, including where people live and have homes, into a gun-free zone overnight. Yeah, those are big issues. And, and you know, I know Sam's going to go through some others, but 262 scares the bejesus out of me if it gets passed because it really does try to dismantle what we're all in this for. I mean, at my age and Sam's age, we're trying to give back and help that next generation come up to replace us. And this is out there in the open, how they're trying to stop us from being able to do it. Go ahead, Sam. So we've got uh, uh, bills that add more requirements to the dealer record of sales. You have to include an email and that doesn't say what happens if you don't have an email. Uh, more questions that are being asked. They've got provisions that will uh, require people to take tests to buy guns other than the firearm safety certificate. They they seem not to know that that's already, already required. They've got um, a pilot program to make Sacramento, the city of Sacramento, a urban gun-free zone, uh, a clearly unconstitutional under uh, Bruin. Um, they've got uh, uh, bills on concealed carry. We have a concealed carry license instructor out of the uh, Northern California who thought it was a really good idea to require that or have the government require a particular CCW course that all people have to teach, approved by the Department of Justice with tests that have to be submitted to the DOJ before they can they can um, issue licenses. Uh, he's a a a. Uh, a, a wonder of one who believes this kind of gobbledygook. We've got uh, more issues on waiting periods as to how long you you need to wait and what's supposed to happen on waiting periods. We've got um, duplicate bills that that require the DOJ to inspect all dealers, no matter what size, on a on a regular basis. Even though they've done a pretty good job in, of inspecting everybody. Um, it, another one that would give DOJ the ability to uh, not stick to the 30-day deadline for processing incomplete, um, you know, approvals on, on firearms purchases. Um, we've got uh, firearm safety education bills. We've got, of course, the CCW bills, uh, the, the 918 uh, Redux. We've got... Um, a bill to require liability insurance of everybody. And that was interesting. We just went through a committee hearing last week where the insurance industry in mass came up and said, you know what? This insurance doesn't exist and we cannot, you're asking us to change the way insurance is done. We cannot insure somebody for a negligent act. Accidents is one thing, but negligence is another thing. And negligence has a criminal uh, aspect to it. Uh, some acts of negligence have criminal penalties to it, so they can't do that. And not to mention that it's unconstitutional to put a precursor requirement before somebody exercises a constitutional right. Um, you know, ad additional uh, duplicative dealer requirements, um, uh, multiple bills having to do with, with dealers and storage. Oh, one bill that would require all dealers to mandatorily accept any guns that are turned into them to store for somebody who is in some sort of crisis. Instead of people 
saying, hey, I'm I'm having suicidal thoughts. I'm going to take my guns to the police to hold for a while or something. This bill says that if they bring them to a dealer, it is mandatory that they take that collection of firearms and store them for an indefinite period of time. Way big problems there. Um uh, the, 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 you know, the bills on, on, on micro stamping and the safe handgun list. Um, there's a bill that says that any, any financial institution that deals with any aspect of, of firearms businesses cannot do business with the state of California, uh, and on and on and on and a bunch of them that we're monitoring. And, uh, it's, it's ridiculous everything that they're, that they're trying to do, but they're on the fringes. Because they've already done everything for the core of of owning a gun in the state of California, and this is what they have left. And 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 all of the anti gun organizations are coming and saying, "Yeah, this is going to save lives. This is going to prevent criminals from using guns, or or prevent guns from jumping out of the counter, or or off the desk, or out from under the pillow and shooting somebody all on on their own." Um, and so yeah, it's it's kind of busy up here. It's amazing how many times I've heard Sam, Dan, myself say, had we went to a magic land and your bill been passed, signed, and in place, none of the tragedies of the past decade would have been stopped. And the number of times, like just on a micro stamping bill, we're all like, you're making a bet. And this is something I want to point out. We're literally fighting a bill over a technology that doesn't exist. That's right. We are making a law for something that does not exist when the whole purpose of a bill in the legislature is to correct something that exists that is problematic to society. All right, guys, we've covered this from one end to the other, I think. Mm -hmm. Um, What have we missed? Is there anything we haven't talked about we should be talking about? There's always going to be more, Joel, but but we've covered the the legislative aspect. Hopefully, we've given some insight into your listeners and our supporters. That uh, first of all, thank you for supporting us because because of their support, we're able to learn things and be in, engaged in the fight. Uh, and more stuff is going to come. But if you continue to trust us, we're going to do everything in our power to defeat them of uh, these anti gun bills in the legislative process, and then we're going to team up together to crush them in the courts. That is our commitment. That's where we are. Stay faithful. And we appreciate every one of you who loves the Constitution, the Bill of Rights, and the Second Amendment in particular. Thank you again very much for watching the entire interview. I'm very grateful. I got some great interviews coming up with some other folks who are fighting for your rights around the nation, including, I hope, up in Washington and Oregon, which have gone tremendously south. So Stay tuned for those. Those will be coming up soon. If you wouldn't mind supporting the channel, you can do that by either taking a class with us at Practical Defense Systems. That is the company that I own. There is a link in the description. Or if you like, you can join Gun Guy TV crew and become a member of the crew. It's a subscription place where you can get all kinds of uh, content you can't find anywhere else because it's exclusive to Gun Guy TV crew members. You can find that on Patreon as well as on Locals or... If it's easier, you can just go to gunguytvcrew.com. Thanks again. Have a great week. And wherever you go, whatever you do, stay safe.